415 slot reserved for the Arizona University Sun Devils. They are the number 11 seed in the West region. They're out of the Pacific 12 Conference. They will play number six Buffalo in Friday's second game, approximately 250. Uh, the men's basketball contact is Doug Tamaro. The head coach is Bobby Hurley. The student body up here is Remy Martin and Zylan Cheatham. We are ready for questions at any time. Start right there. <clears throat> Hold Rubino Devils Digest. Uh, question to either of you guys. Uh, just talk about how crazy the last 24 hours have been. You know, emotional win against St. John's, landing here at 4 o'clock in the morning, and 12 hours after you land, you already got to practice. Remy, you first, please. Um, it's, been, it's been very exciting. I mean, just to experience this um, my sophomore year as well. Um, it's just been a great experience, man, winning um, and advancing, just the, the satisfaction of just winning and knowing that your, season, your, se your season's still going. Um, it's a great, great feeling, great accomplishment. And, um, you know, obviously that we're, we're, we're our eyes are on the prize and we're definitely trying to uh, continue to win, but we're also um, absorbing um, everything that comes with it. Uh, I mean, to obviously accomplish a win like that, um, to celebrate it with your guys, but uh, hours after that, get back on the plane and uh, lock into the next task. Uh, I'd say it's pretty much been an emotional roller coaster, but uh, you have to embrace your wins. You have to uh, enjoy it, live in the moment, but at the same time, you got to stay focused on the task at hand. Uh, to, to kind of dovetail off that, how do you know what was the most difficult part of that quick turnaround? I think it was like a 16 to 20 hour turnaround. When did you guys get in? What was the what was the most difficult part of this? Zion, uh, you first this time. We didn't. Uh, I didn't actually get into my hotel bed <laughs> until about I want to say like five in the morning. But uh, I say the, the the most tough part about it was just uh, leaving straight from the game. Uh, your your bags are already packed. You go straight to the airport and. Um, you're getting straight back on the road. But on the flip side of that, it's like uh, our fans and our uh, dance and, and cheer team and uh, our band, they did such a good job of uh, keeping us in, in positive spirits, just keeping us happy about when we got to the airport, they're there, uh, they're cheering for us. And uh, it's just it's stuff like that that you just have to embrace and uh, look at it as part of the process. Uh, really, this is for either of you guys. Uh, when you're scouting Buffalo and looking at Buffalo, what jumps out at them that what do they do that can really p uh, pose challenges for you guys? Remy, you first, please. Um, we, we haven't got to that yet, but um, we know that, you know, they're going to go out and play hard as they can. Um, they're a great team. We know that. We know that, you know, their record speaks for the, itself. You know, they, they're a winning team. So uh, we know that, you know, they're going to come out and play hard, and it's going to be a fun game. I'd say aside of the X and O's part of it, um, just considering uh, they're considered a mid-major uh, conference and uh, they, they're coming off of 12 straight wins and stuff like that. Uh, I've actually been a part of that mid-major uh, mid conference that uh, you, you want to be considered the top, top of the top. So uh, we know they're going to come out extremely hungry. Um, now to get to the X and O's part, I mean, they're a really disciplined team. They, uh, they don't make many mistakes. They, they capitalize off of mistakes. And, uh, we we got to clean up some turnovers, and uh, like I said, we know we're going to get their best shot, but we got to make sure we match the match their intensity. Cheers and Susel, KPNX. Uh, this is for you, Remy. It seems like with this team, on any given night, somebody different might step up and have a fantastic game. For you personally, kind of in and out of the game last night. Yeah. Um, does it does it make you? I don't know. If, if comfort's the right word, maybe give you more confidence, knowing that if you do have to sit down at this point with just, you know, your your health condition, that your guys have it. Yeah, I mean, our guys, we've we've been through so much adversity, um, you know, on and off the court. We're we're so tight knit um, that I know, even when I'm not playing my best game, that somebody like you know Lou, Rob, or Melo, anybody could step up, and that's the great thing about our team is that. There's no individuals. We're all we're all together. When one falls, the other one's there to pick them up. So um, that's the that's the greatness of our team. And I'm I'm just happy to be a part of the team and have guys like that that you know are players. Um, and uh, you know they they pick me up when I'm not having my best game. And who knows? I might have a good game tomorrow. Stay here. Just going off that, I guess for for either one of you, can you talk about? 
um, what Lou did last night. And um, I think really this morning, he kind of got some more national recognition, finally, not just you know people in Arizona recognizing it. Silent, what do you think? Uh, at this point, nothing he does really surprises me. Um, I mean, I've seen the work that he put in. I mean, from the, I remember the first workout I ever worked out with him, and he was just doing things that you don't really see freshmen do. And uh, I've been around for what this is my fifth year, so uh, it's, it's just things you never really see freshmen do. So, um, not that I was expecting him to have a game like that, but the fact that he did is just compliments to the work he put in, the confidence he has in himself, and. Uh, the confidence Bobby gives us as players. He's a beast. <laughs> Facts. Uh, this is once again for both of you guys. Uh, obviously, a big storyline with this game is Bobby going against his former assistant with Nate Oates. Has he talked about that at all, or you know, do you do you see him, you know, maybe a little extra emotional, uh, anything like that? Remy, you're first, please. No, it, it's all about you know the team. Um, this is this is about us, you know, our our future, and um, it's just all about the team. Uh, what we need to do to to be successful. It's not about him. He's never been a me guy. So, um, you know, everything that he says or, or does is for all of us. Uh, to kind of piggyback off of that, I mean, he's done a really good job in uh, kind of uh, making it our journey as opposed to his. Uh, that was his message. Just uh, don't really get too far into the whole. Uh, emotional impact that I mean this game could have on me or something like that he was just like uh, we, I want you guys to stay focused he's like I've, I've already did what I did in college and I've, I've made my journey it's, it's you guys' turn so uh, he's doing a really good job and trying to make it not about itself anything else for the student athletes of Arizona State all right gentlemen thank you very much Best of luck.
As advertised, the head coach of Arizona State is here, Bobby Hurley. We're going to ask him to make a statement on his team about getting to Tulsa, how they got to Tulsa. Then we'll open up for questions. Bobby, please. Yeah, it was just uh, an electric night last night. You know, kind of doesn't feel like yesterday ended in some ways, uh, considering all the media after and then and then the travel and getting in here for uh, this morning. But uh, the alternative is far worse. So we're uh, we're very excited to be here. The guys were able to get you know a lot of rest today, and today for us is just about recovery and trying to get fresh mentally and physically, and you know and that's really that's what it's about today for us. First questions on the left, then we go here. Hey, Bobby, John Scott, Spectrum News Buffalo. What was your reaction? I know you and Nate spoke Sunday, but what was your reaction knowing this is now a reality facing Nate and your former team? Well, I mean, it, it was tense for us going in, you know, that Sunday, leading into Selection Sunday, and just a lot of conversations, you know, our, our administrators, my wife, my brother, and then talking to my brother on the phone, he was like, you know, I, I have a feeling that they're going to, you know, Buffalo is in that six range and I see you as an 11 seed. And I don't think Dan thought we'd be in the play in game, but he thought that there could be a chance that, that this might happen. So, uh, you know, I gave it some thought then, but then as the show proceeded, you know, I knew that w w what we had done this year and the wins that we had and, and our record in the league and that, that we'd be in the field and spots were, were limited at that moment. So I, I knew that, that something might be uh, in the works there when I saw that. Cheers and Sustel, KPNX. Um, Bobby, last night you, you mentioned that, you know, maybe aside from your brother's games, you watched, you've watched more Buffalo games than any other team. How well do you feel like you know this team? And is it sort of an advantage just because, you know, you, it's a team you keep your eye on? I mean, I've watched, and, and again, it was, so it's not like I'm in the blind as far as not watching Buffalo. So it's, it's helpful in that regard. But, you know, when the ball goes up, it's, uh, you know, they have a lot of winners in their locker room. They're a team that's won 31 games, and they're a mid-major that doesn't play like it. They don't look like it. You know, they, uh, they have all the ingredients, you know, of a, of a top team. And uh, so, you know, we're going to have our hands full. It's going to be, uh, you know, we're going to have to, you know, they're not going to back out of a game, man. you gotta, you got to beat Buffalo. They're not just going to, you know, give in to you at any point. Bobby Timmering, CBS Phoenix. Um, the tournament has a history of pairing coaches against their their former assistants. They, they obviously seem to like that. Obviously, they feel fans like that. I get the sense, though, over time, coaches really don't care for that. Could you kind of just address why that's difficult for a coach to go up against his former team, or maybe more specifically, yeah. a former assistant? Why is that hard? Why? Why don't coaches enjoy that? I mean, so I, because much? I got such great memories, you know, at Buffalo. My two years, I still vividly remember, you know, the confetti falling in Cleveland uh, for the first time there, and doing it with people, you know, that I that I respect and like, like Nate Oates, and 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 to have an opportunity to go to a tournament, and and then you know, it's the personal relationship. You know, Nate and I, you know, when we're on the road recruiting, we hope that we're in the same city so we could get together. You know, we, we speak frequently. And, uh, and we root for each other. So anytime you have to go against you know, that team, it's not, it's not the greatest scenario. But then as a coach, you, you think about all the work you put in and how hard your players work July through the fall and, and all these battles you're in during the season to even get yourself in a position to be in this tournament. And then once you're here, you know, it's, everything goes out the window and you're just trying to compete like heck to advance and, and make your sp season more special. So that's where my thoughts are. My, my thoughts are only with like Remy Martin, Lou Dort, you know, Zylan Cheatham and, and, and the guys that, that I'm bringing to battle tomorrow. You're back, Bobby. Hey, Bobby, Josh Reed with the CBS affiliate in Buffalo. What's up, Josh? When you hired Nate, he was a high school coach. What, what did you see in him when you hired him that you thought, this guy, this guy could do something someday. I'm, I'm Italian evaluator. You know, I, I could recognize talent. And, and Nate, it's immediate. His passion uh, for basketball was something I was drawn to. Um, and, and it's genuine. And, you know, when we were recruiting E.C. Matthews and I was an assistant at Rhode Island, I got to go visit Nate and watch how 
he conducted his practices, how, you know, he had a practice plan and, and it was organized. And, you know, he's coaching tough kids from the inner city of, of Detroit. And, and you, could, you could visually see the respect that, that he got from, from, you know, all those players. So, I mean, I instantly knew that, that he was, uh, you know, he was a really good coach. And um, me going into Buffalo, I had, you know, I had a couple of years of assistant coaching experience. I had a lifetime of basketball experience. Um, but Nate also had 10 years as a high school coach. And, you know, my dad being a high school coach for 45 years, it was something that I, I respected what he was doing. And I thought, you know, he deserved an opportunity and, and he was hungry to do it. And he, he really recruited, he got after it. He, he developed relationships with kids we were recruiting. He was great tactically, always uh, great ideas, and he was good on the floor. So, you know, I, I, I couldn't have done any better than to hire Nate Oates. Bobby, Rachel, Lindsay from the Buffalo News. Yeah. When you left for Arizona State, did you recommend Nate, you know, as your replacement? And if he had not been the replacement, would you have wanted him on your staff at Arizona State? Well, yeah, it was, uh, you know, when I decided to take uh, the Arizona State job, I, I told Nate that, you know, I think that he should aggressively try and get the job, that, that he deserved the job, that, that he would do phenomenal. And, and to go after it confidently. I think the players that we, we had a really good core of talent in the locker room that was coming back. And, and uh, so I think it made sense for, for, uh, for Danny White to, to make that move. It was a great, great decision on his part uh, to keep Nate. But I, I told Nate, if, if, if you don't get it, that you know, there's a spot open for you with me on, on the staff at Arizona State. We're over here on the left. Number two is on the aisle. Three is here. Four is here. Go, please. Bobby, Heather Prusak from the NBC station in Buffalo. <clears throat> Nate talks so much about how grateful he is that you gave him his shot at Division One coaching. What's it like to hear him have such gratitude for you still? Well, I think we, we share, you know, mutual respect and friendship. And, you know, it's not easy to get your foot in the door in, in this business. I mean, I'm fortunate to have, like, a storied basketball playing career which helped open doors and you know there are a lot of talented people out there that don't get the opportunity and and you know so we were able to recognize that and and Nate worked his his butt off to really put himself in a position to want to be a college coach assistant coach and 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 he's made the most of it Bobby Doug Haller with the athletic can you give us an idea of just what the plane ride was like on the way back uh, where the assistants looking at film, breaking down, just how that, that worked? Yeah, I mean, everyone was just, uh, had their own, their own computer and were watching whatever Buffalo games they chose to watch. I didn't mandate anyone to watch a particular game. I had, I had my set of games I was watching. Otherwise, the plane was, was, was quiet. You know, we expended a lot of energy. The guys were, I, I believe, sleeping or, or had their headphones on, just listening to music. Adam Jardy with the Columbus Dispatch. Uh, I know he's obviously had the back injury, but what is Mickey Mitchell's status with the team, both now and going forward? Yeah, Mickey was, was at our house on Sunday for, for the selection show um, party, and he's still a part of what we're, what we're doing. It's, uh, he's had some setbacks with it, and we're, we're trying to get him to a point where he's 100%, and he's just had trouble you know, getting there this year. He's, he's had a lot of wear and tear you know, over the years, both playing basketball and football, and we're just we're hopeful we get Mickey to 100% healthy, and then, you know, when we get there, then we could focus on basketball. We have about five minutes to go. We're going to go second row, back row, first row. Go. <clears throat> Hold Rubino, Devils, Dodgers. Bobby, when you look at the game against St. John's and, and the high number of turnovers, was it really just a, a matter of Remy Martin not being 100% and not and only playing 23 minutes, or are there some other uh, underlying factors? Yeah, I think when you when you generate that type of lead, sometimes you're, you're – uh, you know, you, you let your guard down some, and, and we got a little careless w with the basketball, and, and you also have a team that's, that's desperate, you know, playing for their season. And, you know, they have, say, they have some quick twitch athletes. You know, they, St. John's plays, you know, five guys some, that are around 6'5-ish that can move around and, and shoot passing lanes. And they did a great job of turning people over before us, but we have to do better at that. Um, Remy is usually a one-man press break. Um, he's so fast and good with the ball. and. It just wasn't quite up for that challenge yesterday. Hopefully, you know, another, another, a little more time to get healthy that he'll be uh, better tomorrow night. Bobby, Nate uh, fondly recalls some pickup games that you guys would have 
when you were at UB, and he said that it, it was really competitive. What do you recall about some of those uh, some of those times? Yeah, and where my game is at right now, I'd almost like to forget. You know, because I like to remember back to when I was actually good. But um, I, we did play at 6 a.m. hoops, and and I remember it. And and uh, I think there was a D2 player that was that was playing with us, and he knew my rep, and 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 I was like. I don't know, 39, it was uh, 43 or 44. And then, and he's trying to go at me like I was 24. So, um, you know, kind of pushed me really and my competitive juices kicked in and, you know, I stole the ball um, at half court and, and he chased me down. Most times in pickup, you just let the guy go and lay it in. And he, and he so I had to go to find another gear and I ended up pulling my hamstring. So that was like one of the last times I really competitively tried to play basketball was, was in Buffalo. Right down here, the first row. And Nate said that when he was you know, building the program at UB and really making it his own, how did he lean on you and your brother, you know, when he was, you know, I guess, constructing his, his own vision for the program? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't a, you know, as, as much as the foundation was there from what we did for two years, there were, there were obstacles. You know, he had a couple of key guys leave the program and, he had to go in another direction. I think he, he hired a very good staff too, and his assistants have done a good job of, of getting players. And then, you know, Nate, you know, went out of the region and, and, and found Massenburg, which was, a, you know, a huge get for, uh, for, for Buffalo. Okay, we get everybody in? Excellent. All right, guys, Bobby, thank, thank you. you very much. Good luck.